Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy. Hey guys, today I'm bringing another review, and this is for the LG V10. This is LG's latest flagship device for the holidays, and really it's meant to compete with the best of the best out there. And it does in a lot of scenarios. The hardware is really great, coming in with uh, some of the best specs out there, uh, coming from Snapdragon, and then RAM, and just everything in packs when it comes to hardware. The camera is really looking great, and I think this whole phone just aesthetically does look a lot better than the G4, in my opinion. It just looks a bit more different, a bit more refined. I personally love this background really nicely. Now, in terms of the overall phone performance, well, it never really stutters or lags. It kind of goes all around and just always performs very well and really good. When it comes to the camera quality, this is where LG really wants it to shine because of all the manual modes it has. It has auto, but it mainly wants you to focus on the manual. That it has manual photo taking and even manual video taking now, where you can change a lot of things, and it offers some modes that quite frankly I haven't seen anywhere else, including having 4K video with 24 frames per second. That is a high, high quality video. Now, when we take a look at those, I think we get a little bit of a different uh, story. Overall, the low light uh, is pretty good and these photos were taken on automatic so overall I think the photos uh, do a good job detail looks pretty good on it very clear very sharp overall and again color reproduction and even selfies now selfies LG has two front cameras right here so we have a regular selfie and then a wide angle selfie as you can see though, this wide angle selfie, when I bring it up close, it definitely has a bit of a bubble effect as everything kind of bubbles out. So that was a little disappointing, especially since that's the reason why I heard they use two cameras instead of one. Now the overall camera quality is some of the best photo taken out there, really good low light especially. The battery life is a mixed bag. Sometimes it does really well especially when you're not using this, and especially for not having marshmallow yet, it's really good at maintaining its battery life when you're not using it. However, when you do use it, it does tend to drain down a little bit when using it to its full potential at full brightness, at using it, downloading things and everything like that. It just drains down very quickly in that aspect. Overall, I did think the battery life is going to be for most users, you're still going to get a full day out of it, but you're definitely not going to get to that second day mark as some phablets have. And when it comes to the music quality, it's okay. It's all I ever know. It's what I really know. But overall, it's going to be an okay sound quality. I think they would benefit from putting speakers on the front or just a bit maybe two speakers instead of one. It just, I feel that it could be better when it comes to this kind of sound quality. Overall, I love that it has removable backing and the fact that you can add a micro SD card very simply and easily, and you can remove the battery. This is something that's obviously not as often found nowadays on Android. So anyone that's really a fan of those two features is obviously going to fall in love with those two features on here. The bumpers make it a bit wide for my taste, but I just feel like this can take a hit, which is something that I definitely love about it. Overall, the second screen though, I really didn't feel that it was as great as I would want it to be. Why is that? Well, because of the placement. To reach the second screen, I have to kind of lean my hand and reposition it just to get to it. I think this would really have benefited from being on the bottom. It makes more sense that way. Swiping on the bottom is a lot easier to get to when you're using it one-handed. And speaking of one-handed, it probably has the best way of one-handed use I've ever found. Just swiping on either the multi-recent button or the back button, and it allows you to use the phone one-handed. This is so convenient and it's something that every phablet or phone of this size should have. So kudos to LG to having the best one-handed usability I've ever seen. 
overall, what do I think about this phone and should I recommend it for every user? I wouldn't recommend it for every user. However, if you are a power user, if you liked LG's interface before, and if you're not necessarily needing a stock Android experience, but you want the ability to have removal battery and add-on storage, plus one of the best cameras out there, I think you're gonna be happy with the V10. In my, in my experience, it's definitely an improvement with battery life and overall just fine tuning uh, than the G4. And I think LG really has just done a nice, great quality when it comes to this phone. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Is this going to be your next phone? Please let me know. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy.